Assalamu alaikum. Uh, this presentation I will talk about the pancreatitis. Actually, this is not a standard presentation. This is uh, taken from the uh, textbook uh, and highlighted uh, from the textbook that is uh, Hodgkin. The, this, uh, this is mainly targeting the uh, medical students. Uh, and of course, this presentation does not substitute uh, reading the text. Uh, I'll try to make it in short five uh, or max uh, ten minutes let's go uh, acute pancreatitis the etiology the most common cause of acute pancreatitis in USA is alcohol and the most common cause uh, globally is uh, gallstone uh, any work for that to make it easy is A for A and G for G A is alcohol for America and G gallstone for globally next uh, women are affected more than men if you know the uh, I believe this is because that uh, the gallstones are more common in the female and the gallstone as we mentioned uh, globally uh, this is the most common cause of uh, acute pancreatitis so gallstone more common in the females so of course the pancreatitis will be more common in the woman uh, pathophysiology of acute pancreatitis uh, inappropriate activation of zymogens zymogens uh, which are pre enzymes within the pancreas then activation of the trypsin is the key initiating event uh, and this will lead to interst interstitial edematous pancreatitis so you you just need to know the trypsin activation of trypsin is the key initiating event now fat saponification which is fat necrosis if it is extensive calcium becomes sequestrated in this area and this will lead to hypocalcemia this is a very important point uh, that uh, the hypercalcemia actually can cause pancreatitis but the pancreatitis itself can cause hypocalcemia what is the mechanism of causing hypocalcemia because of this mechanism which is fat saponification we have areas of fat fat necrosis so the calcium will bind to that fat and this will lead to hypocalcemia uh, drop in blood calcium yes this is what it's mentioned uh, trypsin and other enzymes cause increasingly extensive local damage which is SIRS and this can end to ARDS renal failure or DIC these are just the complications as a consequence of uh, the inflammation because of pancreatitis this table <clears throat> mentioned to you the etiology of acute pancreatitis uh, in a detailed way actually I prefer to go with the other one that will be mentioned in the next uh, page uh, by the by the mnemonic I get smashed I get smashed we'll mention we'll come to that only here I highlighted the point of the drugs which uh, which are not mentioned there the sand they are causing the pancreatitis sand so S for steroid a azathioprine the non-steroidal and diuretics sand steroid azathioprine non-steroidal and diuretics okay next yeah this is the table this is the table the one I mentioned to you the causes of pancreatitis you have really to remember and memorize it very well the causes of pancreatitis based on this I get smashed idiopathic gallstone ethanol and so on uh, please don't forget the ERCP ERCP you have also to remember it because this is one of the common causes and uh, a common question history and investigation is helpful in this is general uh, I believe nothing to be added in that will come to each point alone uh, so infection of the pancreatic of necrotic pancreas usually with gram negative organism translocated from the bowel yeah how you can have the uh, infection because of translocation from the bowel translocation from the bowel and the organism is gram negative uh, yeah, infective pancreatic necrosis is different than pancreatic abscess infected pancreatic necrosis simply that we have a necrosis with the pancreas and when that necrosis becomes infected so that is infected pancreatic necrosis but pancreatic abscess is something else when we have ascites pancreatic ascites and that ascites becomes infected so this is a pancreatic abscess uh, also another condition is acute hemorrhagic pancreatitis and nothing mentioned here in detailed uh, in a detailed way, uh, way for you regarding the acute hemorrhagic pancreatitis let's go clinical features of acute pancreatitis I would delay this after we go to the to this one yes uh, clinical features of acute pancreatitis two points they are they are important the 
pain going through the back, which is radiating to the back, and the other point is relieved by leaning forward. L relieved by leaning forward, which is they call it pancreatic position. So two points, the pain is going to the back and relieved by leaning forward. Now let's go to clinical features of acute pancreatitis. They are classifying that into mild attack and severe attack. Several points which are really, uh, you, you cannot say that is specific, uh, but uh, collectively telling you this is mild attack. Mild attack like one of them is minimal systemic illness. I just stressed on that to to concentrate on it uh, to the uh, as additional to the other points. Minimal systemic illness, but when we have severe attacks, more severe systemic illness. And also one important point is acute respiratory distress syndrome. So when we have ARDS, that is actually a severe attack. Investigations of suspected pancreatitis. We go <clears throat> with the amylase. A level above 1000 is usually regarded as diagnostic of acute pancreatitis. Keep in mind that amylase is, uh, can, be, uh, can be elevated with other conditions other than the pancreas. Uh, any perforation in the GIT, like uh, peptic, uh, I mean perforated peptic ulcer, or perforated the appendix, diverticulitis, uh, also bowel ischemia and uh, sialodenitis, which is an uh, inflammation of the parotid gland. All of them can elevate the amylase. Uh, so the amylase is not specific for the pancreas. And here it's mentioned that level above 1000 is diagnostic because the other reasons which I mentioned, they are elevating the amylase but not up to the level of 1000. Usually they are elevating just above the normal, uh, above the normal level. But when we have it 1000, so this is diagnostic. This is a very important point that the peak amylase level is not indicated for, of uh, severity, but persistently raised levels over several days warn of developing complication. What does that mean? So when we have a amylase of 50,000 or a amylase of 5,000, this doesn't mean that the one with the 50,000 have a severe pancreatitis, no. So it does not relate to the, not related to the severity. And actually it is not a part of the severity scoring system like the Ranson or Glasgow or whatever. So it is not reflecting the severity. This is the, uh, the first point. Uh, needs to be considered. And the other point that we may repeat the amylase after days after days, if it is still elevated, so this could tell me maybe the patient developed complication, that's why it is not normalizing because usually it should go to the normal level. Plasma amylase may be normal in acute pancreatitis. Yes, if the patient, de if the patient developed pancreatitis, but he comes to you later in the course, he may have a normal amylase. If a patient presents several days into attack, yeah, this is why the reason. Now, pancreatic uh, plasma lipase is more sensitive than amylase, and it is longer half-life. So it's more sensitive, and actually it is more specific. So both, the lipase is more sensitive and specific. Previously, they were teaching us that the, uh, the one with, who is sensitive is the amylase, and the one who is specific is the lipase. But currently, it's clearly mentioned here, and even in Cameron, uh, which is another textbook, major textbook, that uh, pancreatic lipase is more sensitive than amylase. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, of course, this is more specific, and it has a longer half-life. This is a very important point, longer half-life. Okay, ALT are highly specific for gallstone pancreatitis. Nothing I can add to it. A plain ex yeah, the imaging. The imaging, we have the plain x-ray we have for the chest and the abdomen why we order for the chest actually that is in upright or erect position to see for free gas under the diaphragm because we may have another differential diagnosis causing the similar picture like perforated peptic ulcer so we have to do upright chest x-ray to see for free gas under the diaphragm and also to see if there is a complication of pancreatitis the patient may develop pleural fusion and now abdominal x-ray supine to see the ground glass appearance or sentinel loop. Sentinel loop because if you have uh, like the alias, paralytic alias, so the patient will develop that sentinel loop. Ultrasound, ultrasound would really help you to know the cause of that pancreatitis. If there is a gallstone, so that is acute biliary pancreatitis. Uh, if no definite cause for pancreatitis, you may repeat it. Yes, you can repeat it. CD scan 
only when clinical and biochemical findings are equivocal, perforation or infarction needs to be excluded. So actually the CT, you don't order it for every patient with a pancreatitis. You order it if you are not sure about your diagnosis, you are suspecting another differential diagnosis, or if you are suspecting complication. And if you are suspecting complication, please do not order it within the first three or four days. You have to delay it because the last sentence here in red, necrosis, uh, to check for necrosis, but this cannot be identified until at least four days after the onset of symptoms. So if somebody presented to you with a severe pancreatitis, yes, you assess some resuscitate, but do not order the CT. You have to wait for three or four days Four days then you order the CT so you can see the necrosis in the first four days it will not be clear endoscopy uh, in severe acute pancreatitis within 72 hours again the endoscopy you don't do it in every patient you don't do it in every patient you do it in patient with cholangitis I mean with the pancreatitis if the patient in addition to the pancreatitis he have or he has uh, cholangitis or dilated CBD Okay, I didn't highlight this point. So we don't order the endoscopy as a routine. We order it for a patient with cholangitis should be done within 24 hours. And if the patient has CBD obstruction without cholangitis, so that should be done within 48 hours. So with cholangitis within 24, with CBD obstruction without cholangitis within 48 hours. Clinical classification, Mild acute pancreatitis, <coughs> sorry, uh, minimal systemic uh, features, as I mentioned to you, will come to this, the your answer criteria, let's see what's the end. And severe acute pancreatitis, we have differential diagnosis of perforated large bowel, leak and to aneurysm, rupture of typical pregnancy, or massive bowel infarction, Early and dangerous complication of severe acute pancreatitis is acute respiratory distress syndrome. Again, I'm reminding you for the severe acute pancreatitis, you may have the complication of ARDS. Now, let's go to the severity scores, scoring systems. We have so many scoring systems, but here what is mentioned to you is Ranson and Glasgow. Uh, Ranson, um, what I need to mention is Take care of uh, from remembering the, the age of the patient because if we have a cause of gallstone, it's different than a, ca a case of non gallstone. So, age over 55 year old, this is for non gallstone pancreatitis, and over, over 70 is for gallstone pancreatitis. So, to include it in the criteria for a patient with gallstone pancreatitis, the age is, actu is actually higher, more than 70 years, and so on with the other criteria. Uh, I will not mention them or how to memorize them. This needs a different uh, <clears throat> talk. But this is now a summary. And now the pancreas, which uh, the Glasgow, the Glasgow in the mnemonic of pancreas, to remember it, uh, is another scoring system. So also you need to memorize it. Now the management.